Hey, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. And we are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show. And on this episode, we are going to be reviewing the movie Spider-Man Far From Home. Or no Way Home. No Way Home. Sorry. <laughs> Spider-Man. <laughs> wait, 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 almost home. Spider-Man almost. coming home. <laughs> Spider-Man <laughs> on his way home from the store. Right. right. These, the titles of these movies, like, I literally can't keep them straight. For real. Like, it's a weird Spider-Man, thing that they did. No Way Home. No Way Home. So, which is now available in streaming. I saw it streaming on my home TV. Uh, Bob, you saw it in the theater. Yeah. When it was still yeah. in the theater. I know Jay just saw it also streaming. Uh, so, we're going to do a, a quickie, no spoilers review. If you have not seen the movie, we'll give you a quickie impression of what we thought about it. And then we'll give you a warning and we'll do the spoiler laden in depth review what we what we really thought about it. So I'll just say off the bat, I loved it. It was a really enjoyable movie. It was well done. The storytelling was great. They had a lot of um, very interesting concepts. Definitely some blatant, unapologetic fan service. But who cares if you pull it off, if the storytelling is good and the acting is good and it comes together, you could put up with all with with you know with contrived plot and yeah. with um, you know all of that and and again like the the shameless fan service it, I really enjoyed it I had a, you know you walk you know at, at, away from a movie smiling and you had a good time that's what matters I right? totally agree the movie had a lot of of great moments in it you know mm-hmm. really good um, character interaction which is exactly what you want right. Um, the stakes were were high, right? You feel it. I felt this movie yeah. like it really it really seemed to matter. Um, great cameos, you know, and and great casting. So overall, the writing was fantastic. Writing was great. There were, you know, we will be quibbling about some of the, again, the the plot devices that were used, some 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 of the contrivances, but again, you know, you can oh, especially like a Marvel movie, like not, you know, making complete sense. You know that's going to happen, uh, but it didn't it didn't spoil the enjoyment of the movie. It was more one of those things when you're thinking about it later. You're like, yeah, that was that was kind of dodgy, but um, it, it, the the movie flowed very very well. Again, the experience was fantastic. Yeah, they pulled it off. I mean, it, the the Spider Man activity in the movie I thought was good. I mean, in a Spider Man film, I'm always watching like, yeah. what are they doing? What's he doing? Is he doing cool stuff I haven't seen before? That type of thing. It was very good. Spider Man is my favorite superhero. Yeah. It, it really shows Tom Holland. I think yeah. it's so obvious he's the best Spider Man that that ever. Well, that's a ever strong. Was. That's a very strong statement. It yeah. is. I, I think it's <laughs> in your in Bob's opinion. I don't know in, that in I would opinion, go that far. In my opinion, he is the best Spider Man. Um, and I think it's kind of ridiculous that you disagree with me on that point. <laughs> but um, but also I also think that he, he is in terms of uh, like Marvel and a series like. I mean, they've all had them. Like uh, Thor had has a, had a few movies. Captain America, uh, um, Stark. They've all had it. Iron Man had what bad had, movies? No, they've had they've, they've had a few movies. They uh, were where they yeah. were the star. They were the only yeah. the main character, and they were all great. They were all really good. But you know, one one or two of them might have been not you know below the waterline a little bit. But but Spider Man with Tom Holland, I think all of them have been well you know just more consistent. Just a greater consistency than all the other guys. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, he, unlike the unlike the other two actors, he really feels like he's in high school. I agree. He, he's the yes. best in terms of because yeah, again, Spider Man is my favorite superhero for a number of reasons. Really, uh, I didn't know that. I yes, I love that he is a dexterity skill based superhero. Mm-hmm. Superman, the guy's invulnerable. He's boring. Spider-Man, and you know, Batman's also up there because Batman is sk- very skill-based. Well, wait, don't say, because don't say Superman's boring. Superman In has- Invulnerability a, is a massive no, boring plot hole. But Superman's real thing is that he he is more morally bound. And, yes. And that's where he becomes very interesting. I get, it. I get you, but for, for that reason though, because like Spider-Man has to work for it. He does. You know, he's got he's to think, he's got to be smart. He's got to outwit. He's got to outfight the the bad guys. He can't just bowl them over, you know, yeah. with sheer strength. He can't stand there and take it. Yeah, and of course, then, you know, no, he's not that type laser of hero. beam him with his eye. Then duck when they throw a gun. He, at he's him. a finesse hero. But also, Spider Man is a kid. Yeah, he's in uh, out of his depth a little bit. Always, he's struggling with these issues that a teenager struggles with. And something else which I I, I like because it's it's somewhat unique to Spider Man is that he's like the most unpopular superhero. Yeah, he's got a bad rep. 
and he has it's totally his shtick, yeah. And he's got the the media against him. He's got the the you know, J. Jonah Jameson yeah. as a nemesis. I love what they did with him yeah. in this movie. They underutilized him, in my opinion. And so just all of those things together, like we're, we're on his side. We know how cool he is, but the world's against him. And he's this kid struggling with this. So anyway, to me, you know, one of my favorite superheroes, if not my, the, my favorite superhero. And Tom Holland perfectly fits yeah. that archetype of what... <clears throat> Everything what down to, to be, down yeah. to his height and physique and everything. He, he his unassuming persona, his sort of sir apologetic thing going on. Uh, uh, but he also brings the Spider Man humor, right? Yeah. He has to be kind of snarky. You know, Spider Man has that. And, and even his crew, I think, is mm -hmm. one of the best. The best crew, I think, better than you know the other. It's a ner good, good nerdy it's, crew. Yeah. 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 So. All right, that, that's, okay. I think, good for our spoiler-free review. Go see it if you are in all into Marvel movies, if you're in all into comic book movies or Spider-Man. It's a worthy entry into all of that. Now let's, spoiler alerts galore, let's get into some of the, the details. Um, so, the big plot intro into this movie, not the first movie to introduce this, but this advances the ball on the Marvel um, multiverse plot line, mm -hmm. which, you know, I, I'm a fan of. I like that. I think it's a great idea. So they, uh, you know, Marvel pretty much shot its wad with the whole arc of, what was it, 23 movies leading to the, the end game? 22, whatever, 20-something yeah. so, movies. And it was great, but you can't keep doing the same thing over and over again. They yeah. basically did it. And then trying to just do the same thing with new he heroes that are just a slight, you know, tweak on a theme or an archetype. You know, it's kind of why I think a lot of the DC movies fall flat. It's like, eh, it's already kind of been done better by Marvel. Mm -hmm. It's just, um, it doesn't really grab me as much. And they really couldn't get, I don't know, the tone or the balance between yeah. the humor and the, and the grittiness. Is, right. I don't know, they just couldn't so, quite get it But Marvel knew, all right, we need, we need something new. and Something fresh. Something fresh, something that's going to be, you know, some meta thing that we could throw onto this. And the meta, the multiverse was a great idea. But not just as a raw idea. They're pulling it off. Mm -hmm. So far, they are they are using this idea fantastically. Now let like, me like Spider Man into the multiverse. Thing. Well, that, yeah, that cartoon which like at the up to that point that was my favorite Spider Man movie yeah, was right? the, was yeah the the cartoon version. And then Loki was a great series. I love that. That's where they're really introducing and leaning into the multiverse idea. And so now we're seeing somewhat how they're going to use that mm -hmm. for a standard you know Marvel superhero. But, but movie. it's interesting though the writers weren't going to necessarily make it a multiverse laden movie yeah. until the very end they were going to bring it in but then they're like wait if we're going to do this let's do it right and make yeah. the whole movie basically about this whole idea so, so let, let's talk about like so the, the thrust of their idea is that all of the people that exist in the multiverse that knew exactly who Spider-Man was, right? They, they knew that Spider-Man was Peter, Peter Parker. Parker. They, they would come. They got summoned by a spell gone wrong by Doctor Strange, which was, that's the one of the contrived bits I don't like. Yeah. Strange is supposed to be this master wizard and he's brilliant. He's a scientist who's like taking a scientific approach to magic, which I think they underplay that in the movies. Yeah. Um, I love the character, but they, they need to do a little bit more. But... You know, he's doing this as a favor. He's doing a spell for Peter Parker so that people would forget him. Forget, forget that they found for, out what his name is. Forget that Peter Parker, but actually they were going to forget Peter Parker, yeah. you know, and they would still know Spider-Man, but they would, there would be no connection between the two and they just wouldn't remember Peter Parker. And um, the spell goes awry and he and Strange is trying to blame it on the kid, but it's like, no, yeah, dude, that was, that was totally you. on you. Yeah. I mean, you you started casting the spell before you even explained to him what was happening. Right. And of course he's trying to play catch up. So anyway, the fact that he would blow such a hugely powerful spell was contrived. And they needed to, I think, just give us a little bit more of a reason why that happened, just to make it go down a little bit easier, mm -hmm. but whatever. But whatever. It, but whatever, yeah. Easily you can, forgotten, You really. can easily get past that. Well, it was almost like, you know, first of all, Doctor Strange was was not a big component of this. He was important to the story, but he wasn't, like, in the entire movie, right? No, 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 but I love the fact, so one of the things when you have, like, a Marvel movie, now that they've established all the characters and, the, you know, everything, if you have a movie focusing on one of the characters and none of the other characters seem to be present in the world, it makes it feel small. Yeah. And it's like, and it also makes you feel like what they couldn't just afford to have, you know, someone fly in and, and 
and do what they would do. I mean, it makes no sense that they're alone in the world. So the fact like that Deadpool, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the fact that he would hook up with Doctor Strange when it made sense. But yeah. it's a balance, though. It feels balance. good, but yeah, if but it's, it's got to be a small scale problem. Then one hero can handle it. But yeah. you reach a point where it's like, wait a second, come on, they'd have more heroes for this. This yeah. is getting ridiculous. Yeah. So it's a balance. You got to be cognizant. They, they've got to they've got to pl- walk that line very carefully. So how cool was it though? I mean, they bring in all of the classic. Spider-Man yeah. villains. It was fantastic. Right? The only one that was missing was ri- the Rhino, right? Like- so I got to say, I saw the movie Cold, and I didn't even look at the poster. I just knew the movie existed, but I didn't want All right. any information. Interesting. I saw it totally cold, and I think that was the right way to see it because the moment the first Doc Ock tentacle came into view, I recognized the tentacle. Of course. Of course. Yeah. It's very it's iconic. And I'm like, holy shit, that's Doc Ock. Then I saw that it was the same actor. I'm like, holy shit, that's the same actor. Then I'm like, holy shit, that's the same guy. It's the same exact <laughs> that, character. Yeah. They, they're bringing in characters from other movies as if other movies are other universes. Yes. And I'm like, brilliant. Oh, yeah, brilliant. 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 So you didn't even know that, th- no. that the villains were, oh wow, I knew, okay. I knew nothing. I knew, that bit. I I knew, knew that nothing. Bit. And then every revelation after that was like, <gasps> and when yeah. Tobey <laughs> yeah. Toby yeah. Maguire, that, because yeah. then you're thinking, are they gonna bring back that? Yeah, Maguire? would they do it? Would they even do it? There? And then yeah. when you see Tobey Maguire, like, oh, that was just, it was so cool. It was so cool. And so, and you it, know, so the, the, the thing I loved is when, when all three of the Spider-Men are now in the same room together, yeah. right? And they're, Oh sharing notes. Notes. Then, then I'm like, okay, yeah. these are three very different people. Yeah. Very, very different looking people. The characters are very different from each other, right? And it, and it made me appreciate everybody's take on the character too. But there's that commonality. Yes, but then they had, their, yeah. yeah, there was something about all three of them that gelled so well with each other. I, I think, think I, I love the three of them yeah. together. It was kind of like a combination of like Spider-Man therapy session and a buddy picture between yeah. these three guys. And when they were geeking out about, wait, you make your own web fluid? How does that happen? And all these questions. It was. Yeah. Fa- I just yeah. I could eat that shit up. It's all so meta night. because it could yeah they could yes. address questions that like as an audience member like oh do, do you have it be natural or yeah or not natural and they said they they went both it's ways. It's all the questions. Sh- yeah. I remember when that movie came out and people were like wait he makes his own fluid that's sacrilege how yeah. could Spider Man do that you're, you're breaking tradition all the questions that people had how long ago was that twenty years ago yeah, yeah. fifteen years ago yeah. um, that's those are the questions they addressed so it was very nicely written to, to so it, think about it if you so. You, you know, obviously Marvel's trading on their ca- classic character. So you have a character like Spider-Man, which has been around our whole life. I watched the cartoon, you know, every week when we were little kids. Um, you can really yeah. explore Spider-Man, like a character, when you can when you can compare and contrast different takes on the same character mm-hmm. and explore, like, what is the essence of Spider-Man? What is it that comes through on all of these characters? And yet how can they also play differently? So as, as storytelling, it 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 was fantastic, but again, it could have fl- it could have failed spectacularly. Mm-hmm. You know, it could be easily become cheesy. It could easily become like yeah. you know take you totally out of it. But it, it it the storytelling was fantastic. The directing was was fantastic. The fighting was good. Again, if you you know Spider Man has got to be a dexterity based fighter. You know he has got to be doing crazy ass flips and everything. Using his web, you know, creatively to, yeah. to augment his fighting, and, and w- when you get that, it's some of the best superhero fighting, you know, in the in the genre. One thing that hit me too was that each of the Spider-Man stories that we're talking about now, right, the, the three yeah. different Spider-Mans, like different things happen to them. Like yeah. you know, Uncle Ben dies in the first Spider-Man series. MJ and, dies. Yeah, and, yeah. right. So yeah. so now like no, the, Gwen. 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 I'm sorry. So, Gwen. so they're comparing notes. Yeah, and it just. It, it, it almost was like they wrote it from the beginning this way because it, it worked so well. Like, right, the, the fact that they were, had different stories and that the web worked differently. Yeah. And there was all these, like, m- little differences that were significant to fans. Right? We all pay attention to those things. I thought that was such a really cool thing to lean into. Yeah, yeah. And um, I got to give props to Willem Dafoe, who oh, yeah. I think stole yeah. the show acting-wise. <laughs> he was so fantastic as the Green Goblin. I, again. I just, <laughs> again, I mean, that's how you just have to wonder. Like, these actors must have loved reprising these roles. Oh, yeah. I mean, you think, you know, you have just a... Just chewing scenery. And they, uh, but right. he was fantastic, but that's the character. Yeah. He just did it so well. They de-aged... Perfectly. Him and Doc Ock, and it was great. It was pretty I didn't seamless. even, I just thought, wow, they, these guys aged, aged really, really well. well. <laughs> because it wasn't obvious, like when, 
like when Patrick Stewart yeah. was DH for for uh, yeah. for X Men m- many years ago. It was yeah. like kind of it was kind of obvious. Well, you this could see wasn't it. Wasn't obvious to me. It wasn't to me. It wasn't like clearly like in your face. Yeah. We're seeing the technology get better yeah. from oh, movie yeah. to movie. Now it's seamless. I mean, if you didn't know that Willem Dafoe was DH, you wouldn't know. You, just, if you didn't know he was old. Yeah, you would you would not yep. maybe not question it. And know? yeah, his his portrayal of that character. I mean, he actually can. It, it's a scary character. I mean, yeah. that character is so. And it's two characters because yeah. it's a it's the split personality without a doubt. Yeah, yeah, and then you know that was the other thing when you see him playing the the father character, you yeah. know, not, not the not the Green Goblin character, yeah. but the, who he really is. You, he's pathetic, you know. Mm-hmm. You feel so bad for him because he's so manipulated and so screwed up mm-hmm. from from what's happening to him. You know, he's a, he's like a you know he's a tragedy all all mixed in together. Mm-hmm. So one downside, guys, is th- this this idea that the Spider Men had to cure the villains, and that was. It was an interesting kind of angle that they took, but I'm thinking about what's the precedent going to be in the future with Spider-Man? Is he going to be like, does he have to now think, can I cure this guy instead of defeating him like old school? Mm-hmm. Or do I have to, really have to figure well, out how it, to fix him It was first? the circumstances. I mean, he had, I mean, yeah. he, he had. You're, the, you're right. It's it's a little bit of a corner plot wise. Little, yeah. We'll have to see how they deal with it. They're gonna have to at least give it lip service. I would. But think. they. So that was one of the things they contrived. Like these guys were pulled over from their universes at the moment of their death. Really? Why did that happen? Yeah. You know, maybe because they were already dead. So that was the only way that you could. They just went back to when they were last alive and pulled them. Whatever. You know, the yeah. power yeah. of the spell. I guess you could make sense of it that way. And he and he realized he was sending them back to the moment of their death, and that was just too much for him. So okay, he's supposed to be. A good guy, and that yeah, was fine. Yeah. But and 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 they also, I think they made the point that the technology in in you know Tom Holland Spider Man universe was beyond the technology in the other universes, right? Yeah, because of Stark or whatever it was. I mean, he was showing off. He had, they had greater technology, you know. Like he took over the, the Doc Ock suit from him, mm-hmm. just like it was no yeah. contest. Yeah, that um, was so Iron Man, though, wasn't it? Yeah, but that's the whole point. I thought that was so cool that like Iron Man kind of had a little presence mm-hmm. in this movie. I, I love that. So, but also, and, and there's something I, I, a couple more points I want to make about this movie. One is that so the ending. Um, I kind of love where they left it, you know, because they basically oh, they erased all of these layers they added on to Spider-Man because now nobody knows that Peter Parker exists. So he's alone in the world. He doesn't have the tech support or anything that he had. He had right. to make an old school Spider-Man outfit. Yep. And now he and goes out into the world just as Spider-Man with no no with one no knowing, strings attached. With no to strings anybody. attached, no no um Alter, alter ego, and I kind of like that. Like, really um, looking forward to the next movie. I liked it because um, it was. It, you know why, Bob? Because the stakes were unbelievably high. Makes the stakes higher. Like, like think about think about where they pick this up now. He could be he could be Spider Man from the very beginning again. Like yeah. it's like Spider Man day one again. I think I that's know, awesome. I know, but the this, this, this Stark Spider Man suit with the legs. I mean, come Bob, on, Bob, I love that. Bob, shit. think about what they did. Uh, right, they bring Spider Man into the Marvel universe. They, you know, they think, all right, how can we use him best? What's a cool thing to do? So they, they, they stark atta- him up. They yeah. stark him up. They attach him to Tony Stark because it really makes sense. Tony Stark would be and like, that yeah, was fun. That was fun. It was a lot of fun. But Bob, Spider Man isn't about that. Yeah. Spider Man isn't about talking to the AI in his suit and three thousand different ways to shoot his webs. They brought him all the way back down to his they essence. St- they stripped to- him down to the core Spider Man. I loved it. It was perfect. It was perfect. Still gonna miss that suit. The other I thing know, is it was cool, but it's so over. Going forward, <laughs> they established that any movie they have access to is another universe. Yep. Yep. And the potential there is it, amazing. Yeah, it is. Especially if they're willing to cross franchises or yeah. I don't know what deals they could make, but it, just the idea that you could step into any oh movie. Oh my God, Steve. Any they movie. Could, they could cross with DC. They could do whatever they want. I, You know, if... Could Artistically, <laughs> it's amazing. Possibilities, you know, as a, you know, just in terms of the, the yeah, the possibilities are off the hook. But oh my god, though, think about that. Think about they it. Could, they could with any with any and movie. DC would be crazy not to do it. Oh, right, they're getting I know, their right, asses right now. <laughs> that might be the reason why they don't. Why yeah. Marvel wouldn't let them in on but it. But there could be things that are just not either not Marvel or DC, but that are Columbia, you know, or Sony, whatever. Sure. You know, that oh, they, yeah. they could just pull from anything. I also the things that get me most excited are when something totally yeah. new comes out. Yeah, totally being, new, being right? surprised with, yeah. you know, with inside of a Spider-Man movie is a shocker to me. Yeah. And yeah. they really did it this time. So we highly recommend you go see this film, guys, if you Before haven't seen go, it. Before we go, favorite scene. Oh, 
I have several. For um, me, for me, it was when was when Garfield saved MJ. Yeah. yeah. And because in his movie he didn't he, he didn't save. Gwen. Gwen, yeah, and to, to give him that chance, and they the writers had multiple endings and multiple things happening, and when they looked at that that variant where it was he Garfield saves her, they're like, of course he's got to do this. Yeah. It's just too poignant. That scene almost, you and know, they played oof. it well. Yeah, it was. I, so, I love that for that character. It was great. I, I have a, I have a, a favorite scene that has Garfield as well. When ah. when um, when the kid opens up the portal and they see Spider Man yeah. down an alley. That was Tobey Maguire. <laughs> No, it wasn't. It wasn't. No, that was Garfield. So, so then I'm like, oh, why is Spider-Man in the alleyway? Because like in the, inside the movie, you know, yeah. I, I didn't think that he would be there. So I, again, I don't know what's going on. Oh yeah, yet. yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. So then he comes. He, the, you know, Spider-Man turns around and comes back, and he jumps in. I'm like, oh, okay. So now he's here. Okay. And then he takes off when he took off his his you know his uh, yeah. what, not a helmet mask. mask. <laughs> I'm calling it helmet. <laughs> takes off his mask. I mean, I literally was like. What are they doing? <laughs> What's happening? Like, in that moment, like yeah. that, that was the moment. So that's why yeah, I would really yeah. remember it. And then I loved when he's like, the way that he was kind of being coy with them. And he's like, what do you want me to do? How can I prove to me? I'm yeah. not going to prove myself. He jumps right, up and touches the ceiling. Great, yeah. And then she wanted him to crawl on the ceiling. I thought that was, that whole yeah, exchange yeah. was funny. That was a good, good scene. scene. Good yeah. scene. Warm, you know, warms you up to the other Spider-Man right away. And then, I, right in that moment, I'm like, "Are they going to keep going with this?" I know. You know, where else? Again, are we you're going? thinking they're not going to bring out Tobey Maguire. Are they? Yeah. Then, did they get him? Did they get they, him? Did they get him? And that was that's what I'm thinking. Did they yeah. get? Him? And that, and I have to say, like he, you know, they didn't. It, when they brought back the other Spider Men, they evolved those characters. Yeah. So now yeah. we're we're seeing Tobey Maguire's Spider Man as a more mature, experienced character you know it's yeah, like it yeah. really felt like yeah this is what he would be like in 20 years right not, it wasn't you know just like the same same kid yeah. he was 20 years ago so it was it is a great way to explore that character yeah, and the garfield and, character and like the he, garfield he, character he was as well thinking back on how he he lost you know his girlfriend died yeah. he yeah. almost had her and he you know oh, like that yeah. was that was a hard scene oh and then we you know when Aunt May died, I mean, yeah, oh boy, and yeah. she repeats the line. I did. Oh my God! Yes. Like, first off, nobody saw that coming a mile away, and would never think that they would kill a major character like that. And not, you know, just because you're not expecting her to die because she doesn't typically die, right? But the um, the writers specifically said Peter needs a loss, a big loss here in this part of the movie. What yeah. are we going to do? Eh, May's May's toast. And he played it so well. Like the, that whole scene was really hard to yeah. watch. It was very, very good. And again, Bob, look at how they set the Spider-Man up. Now he has a, you know, going forward, he is all alone, completely in yeah. the world. Mm -hmm. Aunt May is not there. He's got. He doesn't have happy. Completely alone. He doesn't have anyone. They just expunged and all. And they of were that. pretty good. You know, he obviously tried to like hook up again with MJ and his friend, and, and he, he just, thought about it. But he, he thought about didn't it. Didn't follow through. Yeah, but I mean, clearly that's not a permanent decision. He could always, at any point, True. try to hook back up with them. But it's too difficult. But I it kind of you kind of felt like he decided, I'm going to let these guys live their life. They're going to MIT. They're happy. They don't need me. Why, why complicate it? Right, in the classic, they won't be in danger. They won't be in danger. He actually is the, he has the perfect situation as a superhero because nobody even knows his, who his persona yeah. is. But when he's at the grave and Happy walks up, he could he could have convinced Happy very quickly mm -hmm. that he what yeah. happened. He could have told him the whole yeah, story. He but he then he could be like, I'm going to tell you things about about Stark that only you and I would know. We were, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. like he could have easily impressed upon him. Like it, it's not like he's going to say that story is outlandish. Yeah. Those weird things would never happen in this universe. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, all right, so we're good. We did. We loved it. Go Great see movie. it. Uh, it's worth the twenty bucks if you're going to stream it. You know, just watch mm -hmm. it. When, you know, you own it at that point, yeah, so you can true. watch it as many times as you want, which is great. And and stay for the after credit cutscenes. Of course, scenes. definitely. And there's of course. and there's, there's more two. than one. There's yeah. two. Yeah, absolutely. Stay for it. All right. Thank you. We're back. We were took a little bit of a hiatus hiatus during the pandemic, uh, but we are going to try to do an episode every single week, like clockwork. That's our sort of, sort of promise to you guys. Yeah. We're going to really, really try hard to do that. And we are going to make a podcast audio only version of the show. So we'll be streaming once a month. We'll be having a video once a week, a podcast once a week. That's the plan. <laughs> anyway. And the weather video. And the weather, the weather video will be coming out in a few weeks. Um, so keep an eye out for that as well. Thank you guys for joining us. 
Thank you, guys. We'll see you next week. Now, listen, if you're interested to learn more or see other episodes, we have a lot. We've done quite a bit. We have a great back catalog. You can go to alphaquadrant6.com, um, and you can also go to Patreon forward slash alphaquadrant6 if you would like to support this show. Thanks. Thanks.